This is an outdoor installation of cooling water pumps in front of a cooling tower. For each CW pump on suction side, isolation valve is there, then conical strainer is there with hand holes for cleaning, then eccentric reducer and then rubber bellow is there. On discharge side, rubber bellow is there, then concentric reducer, then check valve, and then isolation valve is there. This is another indoor installation of cooling water pumps inside a pump house. But all items are there like suction isolation valve, conical strainer, eccentric reducer, rubber bellow on pump suction, then rubber bellow on pump discharge, discharge check valve and then discharge isolation valve. Now I have placed both these two cooling water pump installations side by side and let us see which one is right and which one is wrong in between these two cooling water pump installations. Now number one, straight length requirement at pump suction. As per Hydraulic Institute standard of America, minimum straight length at pump suction should be five times of suction line size, which includes full open valve, strainer and reducer. In both the cases, 5D straight length is there before pump suction. Then number two, suction eccentric reducer. As per Hydraulic Institute standard, velocity of water should increase gradually towards pump suction nozzle. Hence, eccentric reducer before pump suction should have gradual reduction in size. Diameter reduction of eccentric reducer should be about 75%. For example, if suction line size is 24 inch, and pump suction nozzle size is 12 inch, then we should not use 24 inch by 12 inch eccentric reducer. We should use 24 inch by 16 inch and 16 inch by 12 inch eccentric reducer so that it will be gradual reduction, not drastic reduction. In left side installation, two eccentric reducers have been provided so it is gradual reduction but in right side installation it is one stage drastic reduction which should be avoided then number three discharge side expander as like suction side reducer discharge side expander should also have gradual expansion in diameter in left side installation it is two-stage gradual expansion, whereas in right side installation, it is one-stage sudden expansion. In sudden expansion at pump discharge, it will be difficult to convert velocity energy to pressure energy and also there will be chance of air pocket formation leading to two-phase flow and vibration. Then number four, pump discharge check valve. Pump discharge check valve should have 5D straight length at upstream so that check valve faces steady state flow and check valve flaps will not be chattering and 2D straight length at downstream of check valve for pressure recovery. In left side installation, the straight length across check valve are just opposite and in right side installation, there is no straight length across the check valve. Maybe it has been done to reduce 
pump house size but it is wrong then point number 5 water leakage through pump gland in both the installation drain line has been provided from pump gland but still lot of water is coming out from pump gland surrounding area is becoming wet and slippery and water is falling on pump motor base frame continuously we cannot prevent this water leakage from pump gland but we can provide one small drain side by the pump and we should provide grouting up to base frame top so that base frame will not be corroded for dismantling pump or motor base frame need not be taken out because pump and motor base plate is bolted over the base frame while designing cooling water pump piping if we consider all these points then there should not be any problem with the pump as well as in suction and discharge piping including the valves